I did say I would get onto the real star of the show. <laughs> Agnes, my face still lights up when you come into a room. I still get excited when I hear your key turning in the lock. And if I feel like that now, I'm pretty sure I always will. You might think that Bow is pleased to see you when you get in. <laughs> the truth is, I'm even more cock-a-hoop. I'm just too lazy to jump up and down and leg it about. <laughs> I think we make a great team because we have complementary but different skills and approaches. Agnes is fantastic with details, which is why she's improved me in all sorts of little ways and continues to do so. I keep things very simple. For example, I know that Agnes has only three settings. Needing to sleep. Needing to eat. Needing to buy stuff on Amazon. The latter, the latter is almost always followed by complaining that we have too much stuff and, our, <laughs> and that our little flat is too small. But as I said, I keep these things simple. I know they are on a near continuous cycle. So I keep Agnes happy by going to click and collect, <laughs> by only waking her up very gently, if at all, and using bow as a decoy, <laughs> and by keeping a constant supply of chocolate in the house. This also makes my life easier because trust me, you do not want to see Agnes when she's hungry or tired or, please God, both. <laughs> Who knew my night on camelback will be a <laughs> half Irish, half Egyptian northerner? <laughs> when we're together, we make the question, where are you from, into a long form essay. <laughs> That's just a small inconvenience for marrying a man that never fails to fascinate me, but is also so adaptable to all situations I throw him at, um, I'd had him, and is extremely tolerant. In a year where the media is dominated by words like divorce and division, I feel so lucky that in the last year in planning today, our conversation have been around inclusion and diversity. So thank you so much. I asked Agnes once, when did you realise you wanted to marry me and you truly loved me? And she said, I think it was when you fell asleep on a toilet at Glastonbury. <laughs> and you lost a load of our stuff, including the car keys. And you had to go all the way back to London during the festival, wasting a whole day getting the spare kit. And I still couldn't bring myself to be angry at you. Agnes, although you were so patient and understanding of my shortcomings, I promise that I will endeavour to give you fewer opportunities to have to demonstrate that patience and understanding. <laughs> you make me want to be a better person and a better man than I am. I'll also volunteer some different languages. <laughs> tai Tai? <laughs> what I like. <laughs> and a Behebbik. <laughs> For those who don't speak Cantonese and or Arabic, those words simply mean I love them. Everyone, before I pass the microphone over to my best man, Michael, please raise your glasses in a final toast to my beautiful wife, Agnes. Thank you.